Yo, what's cracking, guys? It's your boy Crookstone. I'm back at you guys with another video, and today we're doing a real special video because it is my first created fighter video, and we're using none other than Apollo Creed from the Rocky franchise. Now, the first thing you guys are gonna notice here is that he does not have the USA trunks on. I couldn't unlock them. I'm level 99, and I still don't have um, the USA trunks. So we just put them in red, but we do have the red gloves on. And we're using the Boxer Showboat uh, prototype here against the Alistair Overeem. Now we're going to be trying to use some good boxing combinations against Alistair here. We're going to try to keep it in range. Because although I did make uh, Apollo Creed 6'2", uh, he doesn't have the best reach. And he does not have a long reach, so we need to keep it close and utilize the, the footwork that I did put equip him with, which was uh, Steven Thompson's. To get in and out of the pocket with good boxing combinations. So here, we're trying to keep the pressure. Get a good uppercut rock right there early in the round. Just trying to establish a pace. Trying to establish that jab. Not over committing on strikes, but trying to throw enough just to keep him honest. I see that he's trying to go down to the body. Good pull counter uppercut into a body hook. That's good, good stuff. Just trying to work. In the pocket, not really just over committing with, uh, with too many combinations, but just trying to mix up the timing. Trying to keep him on his back foot. He clinches us up as he should. Hits us with a good knee. I'm expecting more knees, and there's the first one. There's the second one. Because Alistair Overeem does have very powerful knees in this game. And he can be kind of spammy just depending on who you're playing with. We missed on that overhand, unfortunately. That would have really did a lot of damage, but we knock him down with a beautifully timed combination. Now we're pressing forward. Trying to keep him up against that cage if we can. But he does a good job of circling out. Which is something that I would highly recommend everybody that watches this video do. You try to set that trap. Get your opponent to follow you to the cage. And then circle out and then put them against the cage. So here we're just re-engaging. Get caught with an uppercut as we try to go down to the body. We slip his uppercut that came out. Fate that combination. He misses on the head kick but we weren't in range to overhand it. We taunt him right there, which is kind of what Apollo Creed did in, in Rocky. He would kind of taunt Rocky. He'd hit him with a jab, and then he'd back up and taunt him and talk to him. So that might be something we might implement in the in the gameplay. We did throw a kick right there on accident, so, you know, we're not going to use too much unrealistic stuff, but, you know, we might throw a kick in there every once in a while. You feel me? You feel me? So we're just trying to take our time. Doing a good job. Stamina's looking good. The body health and the head health isn't the best, but it's not terrible. So we're just circling in, trying to pop off that jab. And if you're a boxer in this game, if you claim you're a boxer in this game and you're not utilizing your jab, yeah, uh, definitely work on that. Good body kick right there by him. Now with 15 seconds left, we're just going to try not to eat anything big. We have won this round because we got that knockdown. So we're just taking the rest of the round off. And then that's going to be the end of the first round. Now we did do a good job of closing the distance. Like I said, we got that drop. Uh, we also got another rock on top of the knockdown that we had. So very, very clean first round for Apollo Creed. There's that lead uppercut into straight that sat him down. We did a really good job of uh, maintaining range and getting in and out of the pocket very, very clean without absorbing a crap ton of damage so that's something that we're going to want to keep going here in this second round if at all possible but this guy did start working the knees of Alistair Overeem as well um, so we need to be careful because knees and elbows in this game are the f they're the hardest things to freaking deal with I can tell you from experience and if you've been played UFC 4 enough you know that that is the truth so immediately he puts himself up against the cage, which is an interesting strategy. So we got some damage off, but he did circle off. Now here, we're just looking for our, our opportunity. I hit him with another calf kick right there on accident. Just comes with muscle memory, unfortunately. So here we utilize that jab to back him up. He tries to go down to the body, but he misses. We unload a good three-punch combination, hurt him again, go down to the body twice. We fainted just because I thought that knee was going to come out, and it did just a split second later. So we just are really careful with our stamina inside the pocket as well as when we're going down to the body because we don't want to get caught with a knee. Beautiful front kick right there by him into a knee with Alistair. Ripped down to the body, then back immediately up to the head. 
Hit him with a good body hook. Now we're really just taking our time. Trying not to overcommit and drain our stamina down because if we do get hit with a knee, it is going to cause a body rock. So we just really need to be careful. Right there, we slip that front kick. So now we're getting a read on what he's trying to do. Good slip by him. We try to go with the uppercut hook, but it misses. He misses on the head kick. And that stamina is real, real low, which lets me know he might have an opportunity to hit that body of Alistair. So we're circling, trying to get him to throw something lazy, but he's not really biting on it as much as he was in the first round. Faint to that body just to see if a knee is going to be coming out. Jab straight. Good double jab by him. Now you see he's trying to maintain the center of the octagon so that way he can back up if need be. And we're just circling in. We're popping him with the jab, then circling back out. See, we just stand there out of range to see what he's going to do. Try to go to the body, but he major lunges out of the way. He misses on the teep kick. And we're making him miss a lot, which is good, which is going to play into our favor. Hey, we block his front kick. He's pull countered the uppercut right there. We did hurt him. Hurt him again right there. Rip him to the body, then back up to the head. Go down to the body, then back up to the head. And we're just mixing it up. We're going body, head, head, body. There we time off a good straight off of that knee. Hurt him again. And we're not going to overcommit. We're not going to rush because Alistair Overeem, if we do get hit with a knee or an elbow, we're going to be in trouble. And look at that. He's throwing him like crazy. So now he's jabbing. He's trying to get that damage back. We're trying not to let him gain any momentum. Misses on that kick. We straight uppercut him off of the minor step. And we jumped on the ground. And I don't really want to do that unless I absolutely have to, like I said at the beginning. Double elbows right there. Jabbing into that block. So now we've heard him. Pop him with a good straight off of that block of that head kick. Sit him down with a good lead, lead hook. Knock him down again right there. Now we have him in all sorts of trouble. Try to get damage off, but he does rock us. And that's the end of the second round. Now... That round really, really reminded me a lot of the Rocky movies. Because if you guys watch the Rocky franchises, specifically the fights against Apollo Creed, they would go back and forth, hurting each other. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So that round really reminded me of, uh, of the Rocky movies that had Apollo Creed in them where Rocky fought him. Because we did hurt him and then he came back and hurt us. And uh, Apollo Creed in the movies didn't have the best body health, which is kind of ironic because this is what this guy's trying to do. He's trying to hurt us to the body. Good teep kick. He misses on that. We do overhand him that time, but we don't get the flash KO. But we hurt him. He's backing himself up. We want him to be on that cage as much as possible. Catch him with a good lead hook. Hurt him. Go down to the body twice. Go back up to the head, then to the body. Jabbing. Three-piece combination misses. Good body kick by him. We jab him to knock him out of that knee animation. Drop him. Sit him down with a good straight lead uppercut. Now, he can't, he can't sustain, take too much damage. He can't sustain the way the fight is going right now. He needs to try to do something. But we sit him down again. We're not trying to give him any confidence. We're going to try to get him out of here against this cage. Try to pull counter. Hit him with a good uppercut. We're hurting him. Catch him again with another good straight lead uppercut. Sit him down. Now, we're on the hunt. And we do get the KO off of that straight on that knee. Like I said, Alistair just, he can't, he can't take that much damage, man. Can't take that much damage. And with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the second fight off of a dominant first fight that we had for you guys on the video. Now, here we are, guys. We are in the second fight of the video, and we are going up against Advaita X and John Jones. Now, before we even start this fight, because I'm doing commentary after the fact of these fights being done, this is probably one of the most disappointing fights I've ever had. I, I respect Veda X a lot. This guy's a two-time uh, or a four-time ESFL champion, I believe. Um, but this matchup really, really kind of disappointed me. But you guys will see. Now we're just we're taking our time because Veda X does is very, very good at playing off of the back foot. Um, he's not a guy that's very aggressive unless he feels like he can get a finish on you. And with somebody like John Jones. Um, we need to be careful that he doesn't take us down because he does have good grappling as well. So we're just trying to circle in. We're not rushing. We're maintaining octagon control because I realize if this does go to a decision, that's going to that's gonna play heavily in our favor. Because I know our striking acumens are very, very close, mine and Advaita's. So I know it's going to be a close fight just because of how I have to play him. 
So we want to maintain as much octagon control as possible. And we're going to close the distance here. here. Hit us with a good straight lead or uh, rear head kick. But now we have him up against the cage. But he circles off. Now, against somebody like Adveda or somebody that's very, very good fighting off of the back foot. When you get them against the cage, you have to take advantage of that split second. Even if it's one second to five seconds, you have to maximize the damage that you get when you close the distance on these guys. Because you might not be able to get it repeatedly in one round, but there's going to be times when you can kind of get them in an advantageous spot for yourself, which is what I'm going to try to do here against him. So we're trying to get him trapped up against the cage. But look, he's doing a good job of circling out. But like right there, we got that straight lead uppercut in there, got some damage off, and then we circled back to the middle. But now you see immediately he hasn't gone to the knees and elbows too heavily yet. But um, I know that there's a possibility of him doing that because a lot of John Jones players do utilize knee and elbow spamming. So we're just trying to stay out at distance so that way it negates that. We block the spinning back kick to the body because I know he does like to drain your body health. I fought him enough times. As you guys seen, he was he's 4-1 on me. Uh, we beat him with Duho Choice, so we're trying to get the dub here with Apollo Creed. Hit him with a good overhand. There's an elbow right there by him that was nicely timed out. But we're just trying to take our time. Very, very close round so far. Neither one of us has rocked each other. So the round is really anybody's to be had. But like I said, because of that octagon control, if it maintains this pace and nothing big happens, we will be able to get this round. So we're just kind of taking a break. Blocking the kicks to the body. Making him come forward. Just maintaining a good range. Staying in range to be able to counter if he throws something lazy. Trying to cut him off. So you see me trying to mirror his movements. When he's moving laterally, I'm trying to move laterally with him. I'm not and at a distance. I'm moving laterally just trying to mirror his movement. He's going left, right. As that's the end of the first round. But uh, that's something that we're going to try to do heavy. As you see us throwing some good combinations. I feel like we did get that first round. And the game tells us great round. So that round was ours. Um, so, so far, so good against Adveda X. As long as we maintain composure, I think we'll be able to get this W. Stamina is looking good. We don't touch gloves. Ripping down to the body. Tries to go with that spinny back kick to the body. But we weren't in range. Hit him with that good straight. Now we're trying to take advantage of him. Being stationary, but he does circle out nicely right there. Trying to utilize that jab to close the distance. Good body hook by him. That John Jones lead body hook is nasty. And he throws that very, very well in real life as well. So I don't want to get hit with too many of those. So now we're just taking our time. Good elbow by him. Trying to get the read on, on the adjustment that he is making. Look at the total strikes landed. 26 to 23. So it's very, very close. But that octagon control, like I said, as long as we don't get rocked, is going to play, pay dividends for us at the end of the day if this goes to a decision. Try to rip down to the body. Good body hook by him. So now he's starting to pick up and land a little bit more than I am. So we need to land a little bit more strikes. So we're pressing the pace. Hit him to the body, then back up to the head. He pops out a straight, but we answer with a straight of our own. Closing that distance. And now we need to retreat because he was cutting an angle that was not very good for us. So he misses on that body hook. We hit him with the calf kick, which is not something that I want to do, guys. And against Adveda, I, I'm probably, uh, to be honest with you guys, I'm probably going to take knockdowns to try to get a ground and pound finish because this guy is very, very tough to get out. So we close the distance off that missed kick. Good straight lead uppercut by him as we entered in the pocket. Breaking down that block. He tried to pull counter elbow. So that's something that we need to be careful of. Tries to go with that body hook. Go down to the body, then back up to the head. He hits us with a good elbow. Working that body, breaking down that block. We block that spinning back kick. Now that's something that I really want, I focus on in this fight, is I really wanted to stop his body work. If he does work up to the head, we can, work, we can live with that, but we don't want him to be working our body. Because if he starts working our body, chances are, He's going to start trying to throw those spinning back kicks to the body and maybe even start knee and elbow spamming me like right there. Look, knee, elbow as we're entering the pocket. And look, now he's just going specifically with knees and elbows and lead body hooks, which 
is where my disappointment in this fight starts to happen. Is that he's not really setting anything up. He's not grappling with John Jones like you think he would against somebody like uh, an Apollo Creed. You'd want to see him utilize the, the good grappling that John Jones does have, but instead he's just throwing knees and elbows now. So now that's that's gonna we're gonna need to change up the strategy that we're having because he's throwing things that are very very hard to uh, to deal with, especially when you're using a, a shorter created fighter. So at seven seconds left, we're just gonna take the rest of the round off, and that's the end of the second round. Now, first round, we had a great round. The second round was more of his round. I feel like he won that round based off of the damage that he did get. Uh, he definitely started to switch to a more knee and elbow heavy approach. Um, so we just need to combat that. We need to try to figure out a way to combat that, whether that be fighting more at range or just picking and choosing better times to engage him in the pocket. So here our stamina is looking good. The body health and the head health are looking okay. We're trying to stay out at distance. We He hits us with a good uh, sidekick right there. Now we're closing the distance, trying to keep him up against that cage. But we're not over committing and following him around as much as we were in the last round because of those knees and elbows. So we're trying to take our time. There's a nicely timed elbow. He goes with another elbow into two elbows right there. Try to hit him, block break him with that combination, but we don't get any damage off. Catch him with an uppercut as he tried to go down to the body. We clinch him, circle him back off into the cage, which is what we want to do. Keep him on that cage. Now we have him hurt. We're going to try to keep the damage flowing. But he's ducking, he's moving his head. He's bobbleheading just a little bit, but not too much. He's doing everything he possibly can to stay in this fight. Crack him with a good straight as he tried to knee us. There goes another knee. Trying to just maintain the pressure. Keeping that block low, but he is circling off nice, so we might need to reset. There's the double elbows. Keeping that jab straight, breaking that block down. Applying a crap ton of pressure here. Breaking that block. Hit him with another good uppercut as he went down to the body, but we didn't get a rock. Hits us with a good elbow. Jabbing, just trying to keep that pressure on. The longer this fight goes... The more trouble we might be in just because of those knees and elbows. So we want to try to get Adveda out of here as quickly as possible. But I do understand that this guy is, he's a very smart player. Very, very smart player. I got to give it to him. But whether uh, whether I agree with the how he's fighting or not, he is a very, very uh, high IQ type player when he wants to be. So we just need to be careful with what we're doing. They're cracking with a good combination. He's circling, utilizing good lateral movement. Now we're mirroring him. Look, we're mirroring his steps. He's going right twice, then back to the left twice. So we just need to keep that in mind. There, a good pull counter elbow stuns us. Goes down to the body. Go, tries to go with the knee, but that misses. Hits us. Goes with the knee again. So now we've both rocked each other in this round. This is really anybody's round. So we need to try to get some damaging strikes in to sway it back in our favor. Double jabbing, trying to hook him as I know he's slipping off. Keeping that pressure. Try to catch him with the overhand, but it just barely missed right there. So just popping that jab out. Keeping the pressure. We are the shorter fighter, so we go down to the body right there. Just to mix it up right there. Try to go with an uppercut as we minor stepped, but he wasn't in range. Hitting him to the body. Good jab. Straight by us right there. Sorry, if you guys hear that background noise, uh, the trash man is here. And we rock him again right there. And that's the end of the third round. Now, we both did hurt each other in that round, but I did get two rocks to his one, so that's going to sway that round in our favor. Now, in the fourth round, I know he's going to try to come out and win this round because it's two rounds to one right now in our favor. So we just need to be aware. Good switch kick right there by him. That's something new that he hasn't thrown yet uh, in this fight besides that, so I need to be careful of that. Now, we're applying the pressure. Hits us with an elbow as we went down to the body. Just trying to keep it close. Trying to stay in range. Good jab. Good body hook. Catch him right there. Hurt him. Going down to the body with three body hooks. So, so far so good at the beginning of this fourth round. So now we're just trying to take our time. He hits us with a good elbow off of that slip. With double jabbing. Good knee right there by him. 
Double elbows again. Now look at our health. It's not looking the best. It's not looking the best. So we just we just need to try to be careful with the the amount of damage that we're taking. But we need to try to, as I would say, risk it for the biscuit. We have to stay in this pocket. We absolutely have to. And try to make him pay for when he makes mistakes. So jab right there. Hit him with a good lead body hook. He hits us with one in return. Giving him a little bit of space. Just to, to reset kind of the timing. Jab right there. Body hook. He goes with a body hook. So now he's playing off of his back foot. And the one thing that I do know about Ed Veda is he will not change out of this style. If you guys do fight him, as he gets a good body rock right there on a switch kick, hurts us. I'll get back to my point in a second once we're able to survive this. But Ed Veda will not get out of this style. He will fight you like this all fight long. Even if he's down, he will continue to fight like this. So we need to try to be front runners. We need to try to get damaging strikes off and then just kind of coast through the rest of the round. But that's not going to be possible because he did get a, a body rock. So although we did hurt him and he did hurt us, it's anybody's round so far. So with one minute and 38 seconds left, we're going to try to do something to sway the momentum right there. We get a good time straight off of that missed kick. Drop him. We're going for the ground and pound like I said we would earlier. We're just resetting, letting our stamina go back up, ripping to the body, then up to the head. Now he's circling off. Now we do have this round in the bag. But, you know, we're going to have to answer if he tries to move forward, which he's not trying to do yet. So we're just giving him the room, just letting that time tick, 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 tick away. We're just utilizing our good footwork or jabbing just to keep something in his face. Good axe kick right there hurts us. This is what we didn't want to happen. Trying to answer back. He tries to hit us with an elbow. But as long as he doesn't drop us, we're going to get this round. So we're just trying to take our time. Jabbing, try to hit him with an uppercut as I thought he was going to duck. He goes with the knee again. Another knee. Now he's just he's just hitting those knees off. That's the end of the fourth round. Now, he doesn't really have too much to offer us other than the knees and the elbows. The lead hook he got caught on right there in that fourth round, we were able to hurt him. So besides that lead hook, it's just elbows. It's not kicks. It's not grappling. It's just elbows and knees, which... Is why I told you guys earlier that this fight is very, very disappointing. Because to see somebody like Adveda util utilize just knees and elbows and that be their only game plan, it's, it's really, really disappointing. So we're just trying to take our time. He did get the rock on the switch kick, so that was something that was new. So that's something that we do need to keep in mind as we're at distance. We're just trying to keep it close. Rock him right there with a nicely timed straight. Knock him down. But we are not going to be able to get him into the ground and pound scenario. But we do have him in all sorts of trouble. Double elbows right there hurt us. Goes down to the body, then back up to the head. Then the double elbows again. There's another knee. That time he does get a body rock. But we do need to keep in mind that we do have three rounds to two or three rounds to one right now. So we just need to survive this. We just need to survive this round. And I think we will have done enough to get a decision. Now we're just trying to take our time. He tries to hit us with another elbow. Block breaking just a bit. We blocked that head kick because I knew that he was going to go for that because the body, the body is very, very damaged. So now we're just trying to take our time, just trying to survive this round. But if he makes a mistake, we will not hesitate to put him out. Those are switch kick, but we were in range, so it didn't do too much damage to us. But we need to be aware of that because he did rock us on that. So now we're circling. Ticking that clock away. Catch him with a good straight. Hurt him again. Double jab into the block. Good hook lead uppercut. Knocks him down. Now we're going to be able to get him into a ground and pound scenario. But we don't have any stamina. Because of those body knees that he has been throwing out. We don't have enough stamina. But we're going to be content with sitting in half guard right here. Just punching. Just trying to get that clock to tick away. So that we can get this decision. So we're just punching. He's trying to gain that GA. We do get side control right there. So now it's going to reset the timer. I'm expecting him to try to roll the sprawl, but he hasn't. So we're just going to throw an elbow just to get his mind thinking. We fake right there to top mount. He does roll the sprawl finally. 
And with one minute left, I do have the fight IQ and the fight knowledge to know that if we do sit in this situation, it's going to take at least 20 to 30 seconds off of the clock as we're hitting the body. We just need to be careful that he does not take backside against us. So we do fake right there just to kind of throw something a little bit at him and make him think that we are going to try to advance. So here we're just ticking the clock away, just stalling out because our body health is in all sorts of trouble. And we're just waiting. We do get up right there. The referee does force a get up. But now we only have 29 seconds left compared to the minute and a half of uh, when we first got into sprawl. Now he needs to do something to try to get us out because uh, we do have this, this fight in the bag. Honestly, if I'm just being real with you guys, he hurts us right there with an axe kick. Goes with another one, but we were on the block right there. And that's the end of the fifth round. Very, very close round there at the end but overall i i feel like i got this and you see me say no respect i hardly ever say that to people but to see like i said to see him fight this way was really really disappointing now let's go ahead and listen for the judges scorecards and the decision here hopefully we did enough to get it and we are able to get the dub against Adveda x with apollo creed now that's all the fights that we have for you guys on the video. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. We do pump out UFC 4 content like crazy as well as stream it most of the time uh, on, on my streams at night. So if you are interested in learning more about UFC 4 and enjoy UFC content, this is the channel for you. But until the next video, guys, take it easy. Be safe. Enjoy the rest of your guys' day or night, depending on when you're watching this. And I will see you guys in the next one.